Well, it's my pleasure to introduce our next guest. Um, uh, I think, uh, how many of you are here on Wednesday? Quick show of hands. Okay, very good. So uh, just a few of you. So I went through a, a pretty extensive um, uh, um, introduction. I won't do that this time because we're just banging through the sessions and as he's getting queued up here. But I will tell you about this. Um, so Walter is one of the few people I know that are, is just truly just so giving and such an expert in their field when it comes to manufacturing notes, creating notes. Walter's never, and he'll tell you, but he's never actually bought a non-performing note before. Um, he also puts on a great uh, event called the IRA funcruise.com. So write that down, irafuncruise.com. I was on the last one in January. I actually met Walter Poser there. So he was on the cash flow pa panel with Travis and I yesterday. And so we did that, and I actually met him and his wife on that cruise. So ma made some great connections there. Uh, Walter and Quincy Long with Quest IRA are the co-hosts of that uh, seminar. So it's a great time for networking and lots of fun and then uh, getting together, forming uh, um, lots of good lasting friendships and relationships. And so we're, um, I highly encourage you to go out and do that. And I'll be out on the next one in October. So if you go to the website and get signed up for that, I think it'll be a great opportunity. So uh, everyone, please give a, a, a big round of applause to Mr. Walter Walford. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, new friends, old friends, thank you for coming. Uh, I do need a couple of designated hecklers. John, would you mind? Quincy, please do that. Uh, for those that didn't see, weren't here for Wednesday, I, t I laid out what I'm doing with training local folks to help me buy houses. And I gave two examples of house that we bought on Monday and then a house that we bought on Tuesday. So I got one more house to show you that we did on Wednesday. And so we and all of these were found by people that I trained. So the this is why affordable housing is a perfect vehicle to create discounted notes. Now what was he talking about just before? That presentation before, what was he talking about? He's buying discounting notes. I'm not talking about buying them. I bought one in my life. And it worked out fine, but I'd rather create them in my own marketplace. So to stuff your mailbox with passive income checks by leveraging the systems of others. Okay, tax-free. Quincy Long, right there. Quest IRA, he brought me to the dance, taught me the business, and I applied it in my deal structure. So my goal is to show you what I'm doing, and then hopefully you can see how you can create your own discounted notes with the aha moment that I had last weekend at another seminar. All right, so... When you get old and 60, you start thinking about freedom. And it, for me, it's five letters, which are notes. I don't care anything about owning real estate. I've owned over 100 at one time. And that did not work well for me, particularly since I'm 60 and I'm thinking about my last quarter and what my wife is going to, what kind of messes I'm going to leave her at the end of that quarter. I'm, a, I'm interested in that, right? All right, so if you want to talk to me, there's my number. And I can talk to you about seller financing for both buying and selling. Or trust creation, deal structure, and IRA investing. I do a whole lot of that. Every, all three of those transactions we did this week were with IRAs. They're part of my life, banks are not. And w we can get you a copy of this slideshow. So I'm still, I started buying. My first 17 houses I bought were seller financing. All right, I still buy with seller financing. The first home I moved into was seller financing. The second home I moved into was seller financing. The third home I moved into was seller financing. My office building I bought with seller financing. My current home I live in now, I bought with seller financing. Okay, am I committed to this stuff? It's far better to use seller financing for both buying and selling. So we bought hundreds of houses without banks, and so I'm going to teach you a couple of things that have done a lot of things wrong, right, and wrong, and these skills that you learn with seller financing are transferable to almost any business, okay? You're just using a house as a vehicle. I'm using affordable housing. We've got to minimize the tax impact because your partner is going to take 30%, right? Your Uncle Sam partner. And I do most of my transactions as joint ventures. So I can carve up the benefits, let somebody have one, 
or two or three easily used IRAs to fund them. The hard way is you don't have to sign personally on the hundred plus bank loans that I did. That's not part of my life anymore. You don't have to suck up to those bankers. I hated it, BDI bankers. I didn't have to give up my privacy and ownership, my privacy of telling people what I got when I go fill out those financial statements. You know, you don't have to fill those out. If you don't go to the bank, you don't have to fill them out. And I couldn't borrow money on my own terms. So, you know, two prongs of, of getting freedom is one is to, to get out of the daily grind of your business by getting other people to do what you don't want to do. On the plane, I spent two and a half hours cranking out a 38-page document so I could close on Wednesday. I'm tired of doing that. I want somebody else to do that. Quincy, would you do that for me? <laughs> All right, for a piece of the pie. Why it was 38 pages? Because it involved trust. It involved personal property trust, land trust, trust creation, deed into trust, promissory note on number one, promissory note on number two, deed of trust number one, deed of trust number two, buyer's closing statement. There's a lot to it. All right, and by the way, I didn't sign one document on the close. Not one signature of mine went on that closing on Wednesday. Now, that's tricky, isn't it? So we're going to talk about methods of wealth creation. And so this is really, I hope you're going to, again, I'm going to show what I'm doing for the sole purpose for you to show, show you how you can create discounted notes. Oh, we provide decent, affordable housing to first-time home buyers in the Jackson, Mississippi area with payments less than rent without going to the bank. Now, when I'm negotiating with sellers, I tell them that. And I said, the reason that I can't pay you what the house is worth or what you're asking is because, what? We provide decent, so you gotta have a reason for justifying your price. I can't pay full retail for your house and provide affordable housing to first time home buyers in Jackson with payments less than rent. You see that? It's a justifier. Here's one. We closed uh, last month. Let's try that. Excuse me. Um, tenant had been in there eight years. She wanted to buy it. Last time it appraised for 70. I sold it to her for 45. And I told her, look, how much money you got down? She's been paying me on time for eight years, okay? $700. How much money you got down? She said, well, I, I can give you three. I said, fine. You give me three, and we'll put all three of it back in improving your house. She loved it. She actually cried. Okay. So we, we go after probate, pre-probate, and unlisted properties. I don't involve MLS, Internet search, or any of that stuff. All that cool stuff I don't do. I'm training people to help me go find houses. And these property sniffers or locators... I'm training over a year period to show them how they can go out and get it under contract. Now, I told you all about that on Wednesday, so I'm not going to spend much time, but it, it just expands my influence. I'm just as good. I can just be as influential as what I can see. But when I have other people working on the team with me, I have more influence. And so I see more th things are happening in my market right now that I'm not there to help. Y'all got it? Why I'm doing that. In the process, I created that course to train my sniffers on how to go out and get seller financing. And that's been a great thing to do. I got, as a matter of fact, I got some people in this room that helped me. David up Finoli over there, Quincy did. Who else in this room helped me? So I got my buddies to talk about it. Here's an example. Lakewood, 4250 appraisal, 700 rent. Okay, I know you guys can't relate to those numbers. But there are some places in California that you can do that, just not here. <laughs> All right, so when I'm buying, when I'm dealing with the seller, I get permission to advertise for sale or rent during the contract period. You ever do that? Yes? All right, so including internet multiple listing? Can you put a contract in a multiple listing that you have under contract to buy? In your market? Yes? Some markets, yes, some not. But we can do that in our market. I guess you guys can't see very well back there, can you? You have to move. All right, so um, 
Now, this is my contract when I'm buying. The buyer is always a trust. I make up the name, the trust, make it up. It's a land trust. It's a title-holding trust. Read and approved by Walter Wofford. Why is that? Because if I want to buy it my IRA, then I can use that. It's okay with Quincy. Create a trust, and I'm approving as an IRA owner of that contract. There's not a buyer that signs that contract. How weird is that? I just read and approved the contract. I didn't sign it as buyer. All right, so we take title in a trust. So they're accustomed to seeing trust in my documentation. And so I buy with a trust and I sell with a trust. They're far superior to LLCs, but not from a statutory protection. It's more from anonymity, where you can't see it. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm, if I had the choice between statutory protection and you not finding me, I'll take the not finding every time. Quincy. Okay, so Quincy said, why can't you just have an LLC owned by the trust? Because I don't like IRAs and LLCs for other reasons. And if I'm going to take this house in, uh, and I, now that's a whole other conversation, right? All right, so I, the seller knows that I'm going to be putting it in a trust, so I know who I'm going to sell it to before I buy it. All right? Right? So why not just go ahead and put the name of the trust in the ultimate buyer's name? Can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. All right? Now the homeowner buyer who is going to move into it can go file for homestead exemption, which is a tax preferential thing. All right, so here's the terms. Look at this. 39 is purchase price, four down. Financing 35,000 for 180 payments. 15 years in the amount of 329. Does that sound affordable housing to you? 7.75% interest beginning March, so that's two months in the future. They got a cost of moving in. I give them a break. All right, so I tell them it's an amortizing loan, meaning that you pay principal and interest with each monthly payment with no balloon, no prepayment. Why is that? Dodd-Frank, complying. All right, so this is how it looks. We got, I do them in two notes. One is a first mortgage or deed of trust for 16. So the, the buyer is going to sign two notes. You got that? I'm, I'm coming. So the trust... The trustee for the trust the ultimate is the ultimate buyer. The trustee of the homeowner who's taking title in a trust. Now, I know that's confusing, but if you'll just work with me just a little bit, you'll see why I'm doing this. All right, so look. They signed a first mortgage for 16 for 60 payments, 329. And then I wrap it, all-inclusive promissory note. Who's done those before? Anybody do wraps in here? All right, so that's about 5% of the room. You got to go learn how to do that. And that's why I got that course, because I showed my sniffers how to do it. And so we wrap it. So 60 payments go to the 16,000. And then payment 61 through 180 is paid to the other lender. The first gets paid fully liquidating, and then a second wrap. Let me show it to you again. So it looks like that. The bottom error 60 payments and 180 payments. The first lender gets the first 60. And the 180 goes to somebody else. Guess who that is? Who that goes to? Can you guess? Not Quincy's IRA. So now shift gears. This is the contract when I'm dealing with my homeowner buyer. They sign these provisions that says they're they're con I convince them to take title in a trust as a homeowner buyer. That's weird. Weird guys. Really weird. But upon the execution, the beneficiary, that's the homeowner, directs the trustee to execute the promissory notes. Which ones? The 16,000 and the 35 wrap. Then we update the title, and the title report will show two deeds of trust in the trust named after the Virginia Smith Family Trust. And they'll receive, now this is important, they're going to receive title from the trust or... What does that say? Or directly from the prior owners, if possible.
The prior owners conveyed it to that trust that's now owned by a homeowner. All right, now look, so who gets what? IRA investor buyer gets a newly created first mortgage at face value of 16. So that's you, your IRA. IRA, you buy the note, you fund the note. You say, well, 7.75 is okay for a first position, $16,000 on a house that sold for 39. Is that a safe, a safe loan, R fully liquidating over five years? But Wally's IRA gets to keep payments one, six, uh, 61 through 180. <clears throat> Look at it like it's a tail end of a note. Loan is serviced by third party and evidence of insured insurance is delivered. So here's my aha moment, what I came about. All right, so see if you do this, or you see if somebody you're dealing with would do this. Would an IRA owner or other money source invest 100000 for $132,000 of first mortgages, owner-occupied first mortgages, on a property that's worth one eighty? Does that kind of pass the sniff test? All right, so where an owner occupied, where the buyer pays twelve thousand down. Oh, so they're investing a hundred to get a hundred and thirty two of first mortgages on a hundred and eighty thousand dollar house where the buyer has twelve in it. Is that reasonable? All right, so if that's reasonable, then the next move is I would take one of my typical houses, and these are $60,000 houses that I will sell to a homeowner buyer like David for 48. So I'm already knocking off 20% when I sell them. That's part of my affordable housing. So 60,000 is what it's worth by appraisal. I'm selling it to David, homeowner, <coughs> for 48, and you're gonna give me four down. I'm gonna give you two months before you have to start making payments. 7.75%, 180 payments. Is that okay? So this typical, this would be a 414 payment. That's my typical deal. Two notes, first mortgage for 20,500 for 60 payments and a wrap of 44. It's the same thing I just told you in the prior example, isn't it? Different numbers. But I can buy that house in my market for 22. I can consistently buy that house for 22. It fixed up, ready to go, no repairs. We just got cheap housing. All right, so my aha thought, if I, if I find in contract to buy a five-house package with my IRA as the buyer, is that possible, Don? Five at a time. I could buy them from you right now, couldn't I? I sell three houses to your IRA and two houses go to my IRA. Can you make an investment and sell the investment in your IRA? But yeah, we make investments, don't we? So... That sale is not taxable because there's no capital gain on that. It's inside your IRA. Now, Quincy would argue you do enough of those, you got a business going, and I would have to say he's right. We don't want to have a business, but you make an investment, sell off some, keep to. So, look, your IRA gets three of those $44,000 notes. That's my 132. You put up 100 and you get three of those $44,000 notes. That's worth 60 each or 180. You paid 100 for it, and each property has, in, has I set them up on two notes. So the ones that you're going to buy, I'm also going to set those up on the two-note model, a first, short, fast amortizing loan, and wrapping it. So when you get yours, Dave, you're going to get a $44,000 obligation somebody else made, but it's in two notes. So I'm setting you up to create a discounted note to sell it. So I'm pay if it's good enough for me, it ought to be good enough for you. So down at the bottom, so three $414 payments, twelve fifty a month, on a $100,000 investment. Is that a good return? Well, you don't know how much of that is principal, so you really don't know if that's a good return. You know, that's, that's a total payment, but that's not, we got to take out the principal. So let's look at that. So if you had three $414 payments, twelve. 42 monthly on 100, uh, that's 7,750 in interest. It's 7.75% interest on $100,000, right? Isn't that the number we're dealing with? All right, so let's, let's compare a million dollars. If you had a million dollars of those, that'd be 77,500 in interest annually. But no, but wait, you want to go put your money in the bank where they guarantee you to get your money back. 
And what they're going to pay you for that privilege is one half of 1%. So for the same million dollars with you in the bank, you're going to get $5,000. Or you come deal with Wally and you get 77000 Yeah, and I mean, that's a high number. I was exaggerating. There's a quarter. It's actually 2500 in my bank. All right, so here was my aha for me. My IRA has little invested in those two free and clear houses that are turned into notes, sell them to homeowners. Why, why do I, I bought five of them, sold off three. You gave me 100000 I put you into three notes. So I got two houses free and clear that I'm going to sell with the two-note model to a homeowner. And I can do it tax-free because it took, I initiated this transaction in my Roth IRA. I'm 59 and a half plus. So any distributions, qualified distributions, come out tax-free. All right, so look, plus the $4,000 down that I got from each of these homeowners, that's five properties, what does that equal? $20,000. So I can go take those down payments and go buy one more house. Six houses that I buy gets me three, and fear, three free and clear notes, cash flow today of $1,250 per month. All right, now that's today. Now here's, here's what I want you to see. Since you structured the sale to the homeowner, you meaning me, with two notes on each house, you have something to sell. You put up 100, you got three sets of loans that are broken up in a first mortgage and a second mortgage. Can you go sell your first just like I sell my first? Could you? Do you? If you waited till you received six months of payments, that first, which in this example was 20500 if you keep six payments, it amortizes down to 18 eighths. Fast amortizing loan, okay? It's, you got something to sell. So you collect six payments, you put that in your pocket, that's 2500 bucks, or your IRA pocket. And now you can go sell that first mortgage to somebody in your family or somebody that needs 7.75% on a seasoned note that the value is 18.5 on a house that was sold for 48. Is that a safe investment? Is it? It's a very safe investment. All right, so Kellyanne, you got a note that you can sell for 18.8, 18.5. Now you're $100,000, you replenish your 100. You got three of those to sell. You sell them off. Now you got $60,000, 18.5 plus your 2,500 in payments that you got during the year. So now your $100,000 investment, you got 61 or $2,000 of it back, and now you created your discounted notes. Is that, do you see that it's possible to do that? It is possible. So I, I probably got about 10 more minutes. Is that about right? Who's keeping score? All right, so. I want you to look at this because this is real. This is something that I'm doing in our market. I've done it three times this week. And you can do that. Now, we use trust. We use seller financing. We use IRAs. And we use real people to do this. And if you get at the right price point, you can do this. Now, you can't do this on $300,000 houses to make them work like this. It takes too long. All right, so what I got, I got two more things to tell you about. And so I'm done with that, but I'm going to be around for a while. Do I have any questions? How about one question? What did you say, right? <laughs> I'm not soliciting anybody. I'm showing you how to do it in your market. If I were soliciting to you, I would do it a different way. We'd go out and have dinner. Wine. Yeah, by, by the way, Kellyanne. <laughs> yes. No, I'm not. All right, he asked, I'm not, how, how am I doing that? And he's, he's talking about Dodd-Frank. Number one, who sold the property? The seller, original homeowner, seller, sold it to a trust. What are the three exemptions for Dodd-Frank? What, what are they? Individuals, trust, or estates are exempt if they do one transaction per 12 calendar month. What just happened? But I'm, I'm Dodd-Frank compliant because I want to make sure that they have the ability to repay and there are no balloons in there and there are no big fees to mortgage companies in there. I know, you know, I know what the rules are, but I'm just not, I'm not doing w what the rules say. Yes.
I, the, I think I heard the question. You set up separate trusts for every property. Yeah, it's just so <laughs> just copy the name and rename it. Yes. Well, do I get pushback from the buyers on the trust? So I usually sign the contract, and this is a one-on-one -on -one negotiation. I got to be in front of them, and so I, I tell them I'm in my office that I own in a trust. My office, I go in there, pull out the deed, and say, look, I've been doing this for 34 years. Look how I took title. It's in a trust. It's right here. Do you think that if I've been doing this 34 years, and I think it's good enough for me, would you like for me to help you protect your house from your ability to resell it in the future so judgments don't attach to trust? Individual beneficiaries' judgments, in most cases, could not attach to that of trust. So if they got a medical bill judgment, they want to sell the house, I want them to... I want to protect them from that. So I got to go forward. I'll be around, but I got, I got to tell you about two more things. Um, one more deal. Aaron, can I have five more minutes, really, please? This is, here's my Wednesday's deal. And this, I'm going to go real fast because it's very interesting. One of my sniffers, I had two houses on the same street. One is rented for $775. The other one's vacant. All right, Aaron, what I want you to do is just go, and I'll quit, whenever that is. Two houses on the same street, one's rented for $775, one's vacant. They bought it for $22 each. The, my sniffer contracted to buy for $22 each. My sniffer took title in separate land trust. My sniffer gets two private lender loans. I didn't have anything to do with it this time. And so the private lender made a loan of 12%. He, he put 20 per house at the table, but the note said 21. So he basically got some points in there, financed his points in, right? All right, so I got a chance to buy these two houses. And so Sniffer has 2000 out of pocket on each house. And the Sniffer wants 3500 fee for each house. That's reasonable. Those are reasonable fees, right? This is the guy I trained how to do this. I trained him how to put them in a trust. I showed him how to go get private lenders. So that since here's the total obligation, 21 plus 3500 fee for each one plus the 2000 they put down, 265 each. So I said so I asked him this question. Wally said to the sniffer, if I could get you what you want, would you hold title until I want it back? I'm getting him his fee. He's already in trust. He's already gotten the money. He said, sure, I'll be fine. So we agreed on 5,500 non-refundable option fee, which captures the amortization. So I can buy it any time during the term of the loan at the existing loan balance. My option captures amortization. So I, it's a short-term payout. You see how that works? Now, what really happened, this is pretty good. So I agreed to pay $5,500 per house for an option. I don't own the house. I didn't go borrow the money. But I, got, I get the rent coming in, $775 on one of them. So I called a friendly IRA and proposed he buys one half of the option in his IRA for $6,500. So what did I just do? I sold one half of what I created and put a thousand in my pocket times two. So Wednesday, we just sold this rent ready house for 42 with $3,500 down. The sniffer conveyed title from his trust to the homeowner buyer subject to the debt that he got, the financing that he arranged for. So we converted an option to a note, tax free. Was that a good deal for the IRA option holder? Yes, he didn't do a thing except write a check. He didn't, even, he didn't even draft the document. Was it a good deal for the sniffer? He got what he wanted. Was it a good deal for Wally? Yes. All right, commercial time. Anybody want to go with me to Spain? We're going in September. You want to talk to me about it? It's a land tour. This is a commercial. We're going north of Barcelona all the way up to France. If you want to go, Fenolio's going. Other, other folks are going. And there's my wife. She's going to go. Gordon Moss is going to go. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do two nights all the way up to into Andorra. One more commercial. Quincy, come up here. Y'all got to come to the IRA Fund Cruise. Let's wrap this up in one minute. Do it. Well, as I said, and I'm going to cover this a little bit more with my talk at 3 o'clock in the main room, but basically... We go on these annual fun cruises. I never know why they're called annual because we can't go about more than about nine months without going on another one. But basically, I uh, Quest IRA Inc. My company puts the IRA part in, and Walter puts the fun in. 
and we go on cruises. It's great networking. There's a special going on right now through tomorrow, and I'll provide a little more details at 3 o'clock. Thank you very much. I'd find out about to go to Highway Fun Cruise. One more little comment. Thank you. Uh, who's been on this with us? All right. Would any of you guys want to come back? Yeah. <laughs> All right, signed up. Yeah, there's real incentive to do it. It's a discount. We're going to uh, St. Thomas, St. Croix, Antigua, St. Lucia, Martinique. Uh, this is a Royal Caribbean. And Quincy, has he had a good time that day. <laughs> Do you get to see the bottom half of this picture? All right, so the prices are even cheaper than this, $6.99 per person for an inside, $8.31, Ocean View, $9.80 for a balcony. They're about $100 cheaper than that, and Royal Caribbean is running a cruise. We charge $100. We're making a killing by doing this. <laughs> so here's your call to action. Go sign up to IRA Fund Cruise, and then if you will, we talked about this on Wednesday, if you will send me an email, I will send you what Quincy and I did on inherited IRAs that are very important to learn this. Done.